Nothing Beats. Here's a video in which we are going to discuss a topic which is called linear approximations. Let's go. Alright, so first what we're going to do is we're just going to start by once again just taking a look and revisiting the tangent line. One of our favorite topics. Let's assume that we have a function. Let's say it's y is f of x. And assume that this function is differentiable on an open interval i, whatever that might be. But we have a value of x in this interval. x is a. And that's the situation. Differentiable function f of x on an open interval. And within that open interval, there's a value of x is a. Then... We can find f prime of a, right? The derivative of the function at a here, y is f prime of a. That thing is going to give us the slope of the tangent line at f at a. You know, that's what it does. We've talked so much about this. So here's that picture. Here is this function, f of x, the blue graph. And here's this location, x is equal to a. As we can see that this function is nice and differentiable over whatever open interval we really choose here. In particular, an open interval containing the location of x is equal to a. And at that location, the derivative exists. And we see the tangent line giving us the slope of the tangent line at x equals a. The derivative, that is. Same old, same old, right? At this point... We're hoping to have seen that many times. Now, look at that picture. Okay, look, it's really nice, right? Let's go ahead and zoom in. Whew. Zoom. There you go. There it is. So you take that picture real close to the point of tangency. And here's what we're looking at. And so what we're supposed to see is that, okay, we got our function, right? The blue graph here. That's where f of x is. And the tangent line at A is, well, that red line right there. Now, what we want to notice here is that if I'm close by to A, say, make a little open interval around A, so I'm pretty close by, and then I go up to the graph of both functions, I can see that nearby X is equal to A, the function f of x has an approximate value of the tangent line itself. They're very close to each other. Now, if I move a little bit further out, right out here, okay, make the open interval a little bit larger, then we can see, at least in this diagram, that, you know, the tangent line tends to be a little bit further away from the graph. And in general, we can say that, you know, as we move further away from the point of tangency, the tangent line isn't going to necessarily be close to the value of the function. It might do it coincidentally in some cases, but the focus is here on if we're close to the point of tangency, close to x is equal to a in this case, then the line, the tangent line at x is equal to a gives us pretty close values to the value of a function at which it's tangent to. And this is really the whole idea behind the concept of a linear approximation for which this video is dedicated to. Using lines, specifically tangent lines, to functions to say, well, we can get the approximate value of a function nearby its point of tangency. Moreover, it's also telling us that essentially if you are defining a function on a very tiny interval, then that little piece of the function, in this case, that little piece of the function, say over this open interval, kind of shading it in with some black here, like that piece, little tiny pieces of functions are approximately lines. So it's all kind of the same thing. And so it helps us define the actual linear approximation of a function at a point. 
and that is let's assume that the function here f of x is differentiable at the location of x is equal to a then as long as that's true and it's on an open interval containing a and the, you know it's basically the same situation we just saw above is you have a point on the function for which the derivative is defined and I can make a little open interval around that x location for which the function is also uh, differentiable. Then if that's true we define the linear approximation of the function or sometimes called the local linearization of the function f at the location of x is equal to a as literally the equation of the tangent line at x is equal to a. So again, linear approximation or the local linearization of a function at this point for which its derivative is defined, and you can make a little open interval around it, is literally the function that is the equation of the tangent line at the location of x is equal to a. So what is that function? Well, it's just, again, it's the equation of the tangent line there. So here is the equation of the tangent line at x equals to a for the function f of x. Let's just call it L of x for linearization. L of x is f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. That's just using the information of finding the equation of a line in this case, a line that contains the point a comma f of a, and which also has slope f prime of a. That function is what we call the linearization, or local linearization, or even linear approximation of the function at the location x equals to a. And what it does is it approximates values of the function when we are quote unquote near x equals a and what that means for us is you know we're we're on some little tiny open interval around x equals a as we saw in some previous diagrams and so the whole point here is here's our picture again right here's this function we have the tangent line at x is equal to a and what we have now concluded is that Okay, let's just call this tangent line an actual linear function called L of x here, our linearization or linear approximation. And when we are nearby A, right down here, then if I go up to the function itself, we can see that the line actually is pretty close to the values of the function nearby and hence the line, the tangent line, the linearization is approximately equal to the function at values of x, which are near x is equal to a. And that's what this whole concept in this video is focusing on. Let's look at an example. Let's say we have the function here, f of x is square root of x. Let's use the linear approximation of the function of f at x equals 4 to approximate the value of f of 4.2. So the first thing that we're going to need to be able to do here is, of course, find the linear approximation. Let's call it L of x again. So to find L of x, remember... In this case, we have to find just the equation of the tangent line at the location x is equal to 4 for the function square root of x. So that entails us finding the actual derivative. f prime of x here is going to be 1 divided by 2 root x. And we need to find the actual derivative f prime of 4 here because that's the location of tangency which is just 1 over 2 root 4, and of course that's just the same as a fourth. So then it follows that the linear approximation to this function at x equals 4, let's call it L of x, which is going to be 
f of 4 plus f prime of 4 times x minus 4. And then f of 4, square root of 4 is 2. So 2 plus f prime of 4 is a fourth times an x minus a fourth. So there's my linear approximation. And as long as I'm nearby the point of tangency x is equal to 4, then whatever the value of this linear approximation is should be pretty close to the actual numerical value of the function. And so that's what this problem is supposed to help us notice is that, okay, we obviously have the function, right? So if I went ahead and just found what f of 4.2 actually is and take note that 4.2 here is close to 4, right? It's pretty nearby 4, so it's close to the point of tangency. Relatively, if I plug in 4.2 into my function, f of 4.2, and you can press some buttons here, is approximately 2.04939. Okay, so, you know, some more decimals. We're just rounding here. But now, L of 4.2... Well, plug it into the function itself that we just found, the tangent line equation at the point of tangency of x is equal to 4. is going to be 2 plus 1 fourth times 4.2 minus a 4. And in fact, press more buttons, you get that this is 2.05. Ah, see? They're really close. And the whole point is, there it is the linearization or the linear approximation here is estimating the value of the actual function square root of x decently well when we are close to the point of tangency of x is equal to 4. And of course, 4.2 is relatively close to that location. So we have just shown and verified that indeed this linearization does what it's supposed to do, and that is approximate to some extent what the value of the function is when we are close to the point of tangency. Now, something to keep in mind here, let's just draw a little graph by hand real quick, okay? So here I'm going to just graph my square root function, more or less looks like that. Here's y is square root x, and then at the location of x is 4, say it's about right there, right? Here's the output of 2. And then I draw my tangent line there. Here is L of x, the linear approximation. And so we go real close by to 4.2. And guess what? The value of the linear approximation is just slightly bigger than the value of the function itself. So the shape of this curve, the reason why I'm showing is not only to uh, reiterate what I just said above, but also you kind of think, hmm, in this situation, the value of the linear approximation is about a little bit bigger than the value of the function. But why is that? What is it about the function itself that tells us that this linear approximation will be in, say, overestimate? to the actual value of the function. And so that brings us to the topic of over and under approximations. And really it has to come down to the concavity of a function, say f of x. That is going to tell us whether or not the value of the linear approximation, l of x, will be an under or over approximation to the function f of x when we are nearby the point of tangency. So let's just consider a couple graphs real quick. Say this picture right here. Here's a function, f of x, looking like a parabola of some sort. And what I've drawn is two different tangent lines at various locations and drawn the tangent lines at those locations. Notice at these two points that we see here, the lines themselves are going to be above the graph you know, disregarding the point of tangency. We're always above the graph here, meaning that if I went and tried to approximate a point or a value of the function nearby the point of tangency, 
then the value of the tangent line is going to be above the graph or an over approximation nearby the point of tangency. And that graph, of course, concave down. Doesn't matter whether it's concave down and increasing or concave down and decreasing. We can see in the picture, regardless, concave down is showing us that the linear approximation is going to be an overestimate. Similar picture, here's a concave up graph. Again, draw a couple points of tangency and the corresponding tangent lines to this function. And we can see that those tangent lines are going to give values which are below or an underestimate to the value of the function f when we are nearby the point of tangency. Concave up, underestimate, concave down over estimate. And so from those graphs, we should hopefully be convinced that in conclusion, if we can define a local linearization, say L of X of a function F of X at a location of X is equal to A, so all the conditions are taking place, then if f double prime of a is greater than zero if f double prime of a is positive meaning the function f is concave up at x is equal to a then the values of the linearization l of x will be an underestimate to the function f of x when nearby x is equal to a again just draw a quick little graph if you're concave up Here's some random point of tangency. My tangent line there, L of X, is going to be below the graph. And so when I'm close by, it's going to give me an underestimate. Also, if F double prime of A is negative, it's less than zero, then the function will be concave down at X is equal to A. And L of X, the linearization, will be an overestimate to the function when nearby x is equal to a. So draw a little picture of that. Here is concave down graph. Here's some random point of tangency. Whoop, that's not a very good tangent line, is it? Draw a better one. There it is. Here is my function L of x. Here's f. And as we can see, again, the linearization is an overestimate to the function when we are nearby the point of tangency. So to show this type of idea, we have one last example here. Example, here is a function f of x. Let's say it's 2 times the cosine of x. We're going to first find the linear approximation to this function at the location of x is equal to pi over 4. Then we're going to determine whether the value of the linearization will give us an over- or under approximation to the function when we're nearby that point of tangency. So to find the linearization, which is the first thing we have to do, got to find f prime, right? So f prime of x here is going to be a negative 2 times sine of x. And moreover, we need to evaluate this function at the point of tangency x is equal to pi over 4 which gives us a negative 2 times sine of pi over 4 is a root 2 over 2, giving us negative root 2. Okay. Now, the function L of x, the linearization, the linear approximation here, is going to be f of pi over 4 plus f prime pi over 4 times x minus pi over 4 f of pi over 4 is right up here, 2 cosine of pi over 4. Notice that 2 cosine of pi over 4 is 2 times root 2 over 2, which is root 2. So this is going to be a root 2, and then f prime of pi over 4 minus a root 2 times x minus pi over 4. So, I mean, we could expand that, but... We'll just leave it as is. There is our linear approximation. Now, we could just go ahead and plug in values of x nearby pi over 4 into the function and be like, oh, see, it's 
under over approximation. However, based on what we just talked about, let's go ahead and find the second derivative. F double prime of x. What is it? Differentiate f prime, which is negative 2 times sine x, is going to give us a negative 2 times cosine of x. And if I plug in the point of tangency pi over 4, I get f double prime pi over 4 is equal to negative 2 cosine pi over 4, which is negative 2 times root 2 over 2, which is negative root 2. And more importantly, it's negative. So in other words, f double prime of pi over 4 is negative, and therefore f is concave down at x is equal to pi over 4. So it's going to have this shape nearby the point of tangency. And for that reason, without even plugging anything in, we can determine that L of x will be an over approximation to the function f of x when we are nearby x is equal to pi over 4. And there you have it. So that's it for this video. We introduced the topic of the linear approximation. We showed what use it can do in approximating values of a function. And then we also discussed the concavity of the function at the point of tangency and how that can also embed information of whether or not the linearization will give us an under or over approximation to the function when nearby. So we are also going to revisit this idea in the next video in which we look at the topic of differentials, which uh, also includes the tangent line, but measures an approximation of something slightly different. But that's it. Until that next video. It's Matt and Beats. I'm out.